Mike with the School of Self-Reliance, and today we're going to talk a little bit about LBEs and LBVs, uh, load-bearing vests, load-bearing equipment. And uh, I had a viewer ask uh, for me to do a video on uh, LBEs and uh, uh, some of the nylon gear that I use. And so today I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about some of the different types that I've chosen, uh, stuff that I like, and why. Um, I'm not saying they're the right choice for you, I'm not saying they're not. Um, I'm just giving my opinion on this and telling you why I choose to use it. Alright, anyway, one of the things we're going to talk about with these ILBEs is how they're set up uh, and why you set them up a certain way. If you're, uh, if you're a righty, then your equipment needs to be set up around a right-handed shooter. Um, now, I can reach, when I'm wearing this, I can reach all of my magazines with my left hand. The weapon's going to be in my right hand. But I see guys all the time, they've got their equipment set up, their load-bearing equipment, and they've got, uh, they've got pistol mags all the way over here in their right-handed shooter. So they're shooting like this, and when they, when they go to reload, they have to do all the way over here trying to get to magazines. Those mags need to be over here, okay, so that you can get to them. Um, and you need to think about setting up your gear that way. But anyway, most of the stuff that I use is U.S. military. This one's a military uh, piece of equipment, uh, an LBE. Um, and this one is a military LBE. This one is actually my favorite. Um, uh, there's plate carriers out there, and we're not talking about plate carriers today. We're just talking about some load-bearing equipment uh, that isn't a plate carrier or body armor carrier. Uh, all right, like I said, this one's by far my favorite, and they're for sale all over the internet now for around 25 or 30 bucks. They don't cost much, but it's all mesh on the front with PALS webbing, and it's got a zipper and then a fast text buckle. And this one, like I said, it's by far my favorite. It's the easiest to wear. It provides uh, support when you're wearing it. Uh, it doesn't allow the equipment to droop and sag, and it supports it very, very well when you put it on. And it's easy. It also doesn't restrict my breathing. So I, I tend to gravitate towards this one. If you notice, my pistol mag pouches are over here because I'm a righty. So I've got this set up where I can draw those. If I was shooting with my left hand, I can still get to them. It's when I see guys put stuff all the way over here, you know, so they're trying to reach like this. And with PALS webbing, you run into that a lot. Uh, you run into, I've got my three mags and I've got to get this. Uh, you know, so you're just running out of room. And I don't really like uh, the way that uh, a lot of military guys uh, will stack stuff up out to here so that when you fall down into the prone, uh, you know, you're you're humped up on it, it's, it's jammed into your stomach. I like it flattened out. So I tend to wear it that way. But uh, I've got an inordinate amount of mags on this one, a little more than uh, some people might carry, but this one is what I would be wearing if I was going out on a patrol. Uh, you know, and there's two types of patrol, by the way, combat and reconnaissance, but, because uh, uh, I like to get out of trouble as fast as I got into it, so a little bit of extra ammunition is gonna help me do that. Um, but uh, you can also set your stuff up you know, four mags, three mags, whatever. This one is a really, really simple one. And you have to forgive me, I don't have a pistol mag pouch set up over here yet. I actually ordered one in this color. I just haven't put it on yet, just hasn't got here. But uh, this one, real light, you know, you're talking about 90 rounds of ammunition, set up like this. It's got a map pouch so that you can put some other things in there or a map if you needed to. But this is the kind of thing that I'd throw in the back of my car. This is the kind of thing that I'd have in my uh, my kit in my vehicle so that if I had to, I could throw this on and, and be ready, you know, if I'm caught out away from the house, uh, you know, uh, if we if we end up in that Walking Dead scenario, you know, and I'd take that as a joke as it was. Um, you know, one like this, I would also use this out, uh, you know, wilderness conditions. I have this one set up. This is another one that I would probably throw into uh, my gear, uh, just the way that it is. Um, one of the other things that I tend to do is I tend to throw an extra pistol mag pouch uh, onto my ILBE. And the reason for that is I'm trying to 
make sure I've always got room for a multiplier, a multi-tool. Um, and in urban environments and so on, that, that would be particularly useful. But a multiplier is particularly useful anywhere. You know, it's not perfect at any one thing, but it's great at a lot of things. And from this configuration or any of these configurations, I can add stuff to it. Um, you know, this one's a little bit more limited, but it's also lightweight. You know, this is something you could also put on and then throw a coat over it. Uh, if you were in that kind of want to be the gray man kind of circumstance uh, in an urban environment. Uh, this is also something to be used for a child, um, you know, a younger kid. Um, and we can always add to our belt, you know, things like this. Maybe you were already carrying CCW, you know, and so you've already got a holster on that way. But this, this could be added. Uh, I'm a big fan of Alice belts. I like them, just do. Um, and so I tend to put, you know, a large fixed blade and my holster and stuff on the Alice belt and then put it on. Um, and I always carry a canteen cup and cover on there too, um, you know, and a multiplier. So really I've got a pretty good kit. What goes in here is usually uh, a set of eating utensils, uh, a flashlight, a tactical flashlight, um, several bullion cubes, several other things, you know, a small micro survival kit you've seen in my videos. My little match kit survival kit usually is in here. Um, and a couple other little possibles, some things that I need. Um, and I've got some other rigs with, uh, with different pouches on it. I just happen to use the, the old Alice M16 pouch because, well, it worked. You know, it was the right size. Um, but anyway, these, these are real lightweight. They're well made. And again, these are for sale out there in multiple colors, uh, you know, for $25, $35, somewhere in that category. They're lightweight, they work rather well. Um, I think uh, most people would like them. This one, this one is now for sale for probably around, you know, 30 bucks or less, um, 25 to $35, depending on condition. Um, and I, I know that Midway has them for sale, as a matter of fact. Um, but uh, all the pouches and stuff you'll have to add, that of course is extra cost, but uh, you know, set it up the way that you want it. Um, and if I were going out on patrol or stuff like that, this is what I'd rather have if I were uh, trying to make my way to a bug out location and I got caught at work or I got caught in the car or something like that, this is what I'm probably going to end up with. Um, at most I might end up with something like this, but I doubt it, because uh, that's what I carry. Um, some other pieces, you know, I, I use canteens, cups, and covers, but I use bladders. Um, my particular favorite is the USMC Source Bladder, uh, which is what I got right here. And it, it's just a bulletproof, wonderful bladder. It's a much better piece of equipment than a Camelback or anything like that. Um, I've got a video up on that. But, uh, you know, I kind of, this really is load-bearing equipment, but if you're carrying any kind of load, you need to have hydration. So think about that. Um, some of the other things that we can add and augment our carrying capacity with are things like butt packs. Um, you know, or things like this. Now that could be worn on the back of your ILBE as a butt pack. It could be worn on an Alice belt as a butt pack. It could be thrown over your shoulder. Can be carried in a lot of different ways and if you if you're wearing depending on what kind of uh load bearing equipment you're wearing it could hook up to these d-rings as well as being secured to your belt so the load is uh, also on your shoulders and you know this is by far one of my favorites and then butt packs i still believe in alice gear lc2 alice gear um you know, a lot of people don't got a lot of cash, so, you know, maybe you're, you're the budget warrior, you know, uh, or budget prepper. And if you don't have a lot of cash, there's a lot of good service that can still come out of Alice gear. You know, it was pretty good load-bearing equipment, and it's available for relatively cheap. So, if somebody says, well, you know, I don't have a lot of cash, and I really need to have gear... Alice gear, including suspenders and so on, and belts and butt packs, make excellent load-bearing equipment. They're available for cheap these days. As a matter of fact, if you go to a gun show and you look at a surplus dealer, I'll bet you can find stuff like this, clip pouches, butt packs, 
belts. I know that Sportsman's Guide sells two of these belts brand new for $20. Um, the canteen, uh, canteen pouches and stuff like that, they're, they're cheap these days. Butt packs, five bucks, eight bucks, maybe 10. Um, and that would be considered high price to me. You had to pay 10. So, you know, all of this is readily available and very affordable. All right, anyway, I still have a ton of LC2 gear, and I love it to death, truthfully. I still use it. Um, there is better out there, but for the budget warrior, I got to tell you, a lot of our enemies around the world that give us a lot of trouble wear gear that is nowhere near as advanced as LC2 gear. So you could do a lot worse, and like I said, it's out there, it's everywhere. Um, this type of vest... This type would actually be the last thing that I'd recommend. I don't really like this vinyl. You know, these are supposed to be to help you shoulder the rifle and keep it in place, traction pads and stuff. Most rifles these days have rubber butt pads on them, even AR-15s, almost every good stock has a rubber butt pad on it. Uh, actually, this stuff has never helped me shoulder a rifle. As a matter of fact, this piece over here that's supposed to keep it from slipping over Every body is different, okay? Where that rifle sits in your shoulder because of how your muscle development is may make this get in your way instead of just blocking the side of the stock. It may actually be in your way. Probably will be. Also, these are stiff. I, they're kind of hard for me. They're, they make it kind of hard for me to breathe. Um, and I'm just not a fan. Plus, they're hot. They're extremely hot. And, you know, the, there's a couple things that will break you down while you're carrying stuff in the field. Heat, um, not being able to breathe, and not being hydrated. So, plus, these D-rings up here, to me, are kind of stupid. They're just up there and they're kind of noisy. Although, you know, it is adjustable and things like that. And if it's what you've got, it's what you've got. Um, but if you, if you can this would be the last piece that I would recommend. I, I, I would rather see you with something else. Um, you know, some of the other things here just that are noteworthy to talk about is, you know, get an ILBE that's comfortable for you, or excuse me, not an ILBE, an LBV or LBE that's comfortable for you, uh, that you set up according to which side dominant are you. Um, it is true that there are no right-handed or left-handed gunfighters. You know, going around corners, you need to be able to shift your weapon into your other hand uh, and, and, you know, operate ambidextrously. You know, if you're coming around a corner from this side and you're right-handed, you don't need to stick your body out there. You need to be able to turn it. So making sure that you can get to stuff uh, with your dominant and non-dominant hand is important. Um, but remember, even if you are pieing corners like this, you're not going to be reloading with that hand if you're right-handed. You're probably going to retreat back around the corner and grab your magazines. Um, so set your gear up in a way that makes sense. The other thing that I see is guys who try to Swiss Army their gear. I see guys that are loaded down with so much stuff on their ILBEs they couldn't even get up if they fell. Okay, I'm talking about guys with gas masks strung to their legs, sick mag, you know, six mags on this one. Uh, a pistol and a knife over here with the gas mask or six magazines, uh, you know, six rifle mags. They got six more on their chest. They've got uh, a med kit over here. They got a survival kit over here. Uh, they got a bladder. They got a backpack that's 10 sizes too big for what they're, what they're doing. Um, and, you know, they, they've got 50 pistol magazines and 50 rifle magazines strapped to them. N none of that is realistic. You're, you're just not going to get by with that. And, you know, unless you're Lou Ferrigno or Arnold Schwarzenegger and you're just used to carrying around, you know, an extra 400 pounds, you know, uh, in your hip pocket, uh, you need to think about the weight because ounces equal pounds, pounds equal pain. So you need to think about your gear in that way. Think about what LBE and other stuff makes sense to you. Now, with that said, you do need to wear your gear. Put it on, go out and train with it. Walk around in it. Put your stuff on, get used to wearing it, used to carrying it, okay, and get used to manipulating it. That's going to be one of the bigger things, and you'll get a little stronger in the process, but you should train a little bit, 
keep yourself in decent shape uh, so that you can carry your gear, carry enough gear. Um, you know, the average U.S. combat soldier carries over 70 pounds of equipment on it. Um, and a lot of times a sandbox, that's upward of 100 pounds of equipment. So 100 pounds of equipment, I mean, that's, that's like carrying most of another person on your back, okay, or, or spread out all over you. So you do need to get stronger so you can carry the gear, you can carry your own equipment, um, but also scale it down to what it needs to be for what you're doing with it. Um, don't try to carry too much, but don't try to carry too little. All right, on the backpack category, because your backpack is also part of your load-bearing equipment. You know, uh, scout packs or, or three-day packs and assault packs, we've talked about this before, the difference in them. I'm not going to get into it too much uh, because there's other, I've already made videos on it. But carrying what you need in your pack and, and ditching what you don't and knowing the difference between when you need to carry this and you need to carry this and you know and when you need to carry this with this attached to it you know and just don't overload yourself and try to carry more than you can. We, you know, you, you don't need to end up in the zombie apocalypse with a, you know, a mile of gear scattered before they find your body. You know, where you've been ditching it, you know, every 500 yards, you just can't carry it because it's breaking you down. Um, but, you know, pick the right backpacks, and, you know, I'll just give you a couple that I like. Uh, I really like the Marine Corps ILBE system. I really like it. Um, you see me in my videos, I'm using the assault pack all the time. Uh, I use the big one all the time, and I combine the two. Um, this one's made by Voodoo Tactical, um, and I prefer Voodoo over Condor just because they have a lifetime warranty on all their gear, and uh, everybody that uh, has ever bought one or that I've ever sold one to, um, they always, if they've ever had a problem, Voodoo's always taken care of them immediately. And we used to sell these you know, have a store selling nothing but tactical gear. And this stuff, I just had almost no returns on it. So Voodoo Tactical stuff is generally pretty good. Um, but I do like to stay for military application with a lot of military products. Um, a lot of thought went into the development of this ILBE system. And so I really, really like it. It's one of my favorites. Um, this is also one of my favorites. And this is a real U.S. Army uh, uh, Alice Pack large frame uh, in woodland camo. You can also get this in the very traditional OD green. Okay, and I have one of those too. And they make this in medium and in large. The large is a large pack. Okay, it's meant to carry upwards of 75 pounds of gear, and you know it, it's a it's a full size run. Um, you won't always need this. But, uh, but if you do need one and you're a budget warrior, one of these would be something I would tell you to get. The OD green ones are relatively inexpensive. They are far cheaper than a lot of other stuff, and they are far better made than a lot of the civilian stuff that you're going to get. This is, this is a great backpack. Uh, the frame, no, the frame is not the greatest. It's not the most comfortable frame out there. You know, it, this is old technology. But it's really good technology. It carries a load, it rides, it does what it's supposed to, and it's going to last. It's going to last a really, really long time. It's not going to tear up and leave you stranded. And if you get one of these and you send it to Tactical Tailor, he will put a new modern frame in it for you, and you can get new straps and all kinds of stuff. New suspension system will make the backpack ride even better. Um, but if you're a budget warrior, the, the Alice Pack is something you need. All right, another question I had on this very subject was from a viewer who said, you know, that he would ditch all of the military camouflage patterns, that he wouldn't use any of that. And, and I don't disagree, okay? I don't disagree. Um, there are two schools of thought on this. If you're headed to a woodland environment or you're headed out to the back 40, out to the sticks, 
then the thing that's going to do you the most good is a camouflage pattern. Now, will camouflage patterns stick out before you get there to law enforcement, to other people? Yes, to a degree they will. Um, but I'm, I have two thoughts on this. If I am clad head to toe in coyote tan with mag pouches bristling off of me carrying an AR-15 and a sidearm and a great big coyote tan backpack, do I look any less alarming to a cop than if I were dressed in camouflage with the same weapon? Probably not. Um, now look, tactical backpacks are ubiquitous everywhere. Nylon gear, tactical jackets, they are everywhere. Every dweeb in the world has got himself a, a tactical, you know, tactical outfit and is running around with it. Hell, I see people running around sometimes with shemags around their neck wearing a tactical jacket. They're not working at a PD. They're not going into the A-stand. They're walking around at Walmart. Um, you know, and I see people bringing to work tactical backpacks in, in coyote tan that look like that. It's become almost normal in some areas. Now granted, if you're in downtown Chicago, it's probably less normal. If you're in downtown New York, it's probably far less normal. And depending on your town, you're going to have to gauge in your area what's going to draw attention and what isn't. But a guy loaded down with gear and a weapon and so on and so forth and a big backpack, he's probably going to attract attention no matter what, whether it's, you know, the roving gang, the ne'er-do-wells, the law enforcement officer, the UN troops, the MOA, the, you know, the monsters of anarchy, whatever it is that you, you think you're avoiding. Um, those things are always, I don't care if you just got two trash bags over your shoulder, you're going to attract attention. Why would that guy have those trash bags? He must have something in there that's valuable. He must, have, must, he's carrying it, going through a lot of trouble. Um, so, and if you are going to a woodland or, or backcountry environment, if that is your goal is to get to there, then I would think that the camouflage patterns would do you a world of good. Now, no, I wouldn't gear up and dress in this in an urban environment. My gear may be camouflaged, but I'm not going to don my BDUs or, or anything like that and go running out into the city. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to keep on my street clothes. I'm going to keep everything else in my pack. I'm not going to expose a rifle. Um, I'm going to keep a concealed handgun, and I'm going to try to be low-key. You know, but the backpack being camouflaged may draw less attention than obviously this. So in the situation that you're in an urban environment or somewhere that you have to be fearful of, of drawing attention, you keep those aspects concealed. Okay? You make them less visible. When you get to the area of, you know, a wooded type place where you're going to start hiding or evading or moving, then you put these things on. So it's all circumstance specific. If you're just going to go from one end of a city, you know, to another, to an apartment building or a house or something like that to hold up, then no, I wouldn't use the camouflage patterns. I wouldn't. You have no need of it. Um, but if you're going into a woodland environment, and when I talk about a lot of these things, I'm talking about you being out there in the back 40 anyway, okay? And if you are out there where that is your, your ultimate destination, then yes, I see these as things that that are only going to aid you is having camouflage patterns available. So I hope that answered that. And I'm not getting down on anybody, and I'm not saying anybody's wrong or right on it. Um, obviously, a guy walking through downtown Chicago wearing a suit is going to draw less attention than a guy wearing BDUs. So, you know, that's something that you have to deal with on your own. Uh, make your own decisions on that about where you're going to and what's important to you. I'm talking about the situation where all hell is already broken loose, you are already in the fight, okay? You're already in the fight. Then I think that all of this probably doesn't matter that much. Um, and I'm going to answer a couple more questions before they're asked. Um, this particular one was made by UW or UW Gear down in Florida. It's uh, veteran owned, veteran made, um, and is a wonderful little kit that uses a, a great, unique opener. This is the same thing that we use for parachute riggings. It's a piece of metal inside of here that hooks up and in there. It'll hold up to 300 pounds without coming loose. 
but comes open silently and quickly. And I think the guys down at UW Gear did a great job with this one. Another question I know I'm going to get asked, what kind of holster is it, Mike? Okay, it's a G-code. This shroud comes off, take out the bolts, and you can buy different shrouds for it so that you can carry a light or a gun with a tactical rail or laser or other options. Um, and comes off the panel. Holster the weapon, close it. If you need another stage of retention for it, you put a piece of uh, shot cord through here, shot cord, so that it's stretchy, bungee, and then bungee it over the handle of the weapon, and that makes it jump capable. But anyway, yes, it's a fabulous holster. It's made by G Code, and it's called a sock rig. Um, you know, if you want to change the position, mounting position, they make other discs for this, so you can put it on your, your body armor or your uh, load bearing equipment. And then let's say you get into a vehicle and you want this weapon up here it'll click into place and it locks in just like that so and then when you get out of the vehicle you don't need it up here anymore so that it's ready readily available you take it off the same way put it back down in your leg panel and key and you're off and moving um, anyway i like it a lot it does come in a couple of different colors except for this main body uh, the G-Code company is a pretty good company. I like them. They're all veterans. Everybody over there is a, uh, is a spec ops veteran uh, that works there. I think their marketing is terrible, and I'm not all that sold on their customer service. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think their customer service and dealer service is deplorable. Um, however, they make a really great product, and I really like their stuff. Um, and I like them personally. I think whoever is running the business doesn't have the slightest clue how to do it. But other than that, I like them, um, and their products are fabulous. And before anybody asks, yeah, it's a Cold Steel Trailmaster, or uh, excuse me, Recon Scout, just in case anybody was going to ask. Um, and if there are any other questions, um, you know, go ahead and, and pose them. I'd be happy to. Uh, yes, you saw predominantly nothing but PMAGs out here in these uh, uh, these load-bearing vests. Uh, I think PMAGs are you know about the best thing going I have nothing against metal mags before anybody asks I have plenty of those too uh, but I like P mags the best and I think metal mags are great as well um, and hopefully that stops any of that type of stuff you know there's there's a lot of fanboys out there of different types of equipment I'm not saying yours is wrong I'm not saying mine's right I'm just telling you this is what I found to be good equipment works for me give you the price and tell you why I use it um, you know your experience may vary you know, a little bit of advertising there. Anyway, um, uh, if you like what we do, like us on Facebook, watch our videos, share our videos, and do us a favor, visit our Patreon page and help support us because we're looking to buy new cameras, we're looking to put out more videos more often, and we're looking to take some pretty extensive uh, video trips uh, to some locations and we'll get back to you on that. Uh, but uh, anyway, if you like what we do, thanks for watching. All right, you thought we were done, I'm not. I got a PS for you. Um, I know somebody's gonna ask, it's ATAX foliage. Um, and yes, I like ATAX foliage camouflage. Um, I also had another little note. <laughs> if you're walking through town, this is back on the, the camo versus no camo, you know, debate. Um, don't be a mall ninja, okay? Don't go out there dressed in black to cool from head to toe and think that, you know, nobody notices an assault ninja running down the street. They do. People do, you know, unless you're a goth from Transylvania, nobody thinks that you're normal wearing black head to toe. And if it happens to be 105 degrees outside and you're wearing a bulky overcoat, you know, all black trying to cover your equipment with lumps and stuff in it, you scream, guy about to do something, okay? Uh, guy trying to hide something. So keep that in mind too, you know. Uh, this is all subjective, okay? But think about how you normally dress and what you can conceal on you, what your area of operations is, okay? Uh, sometimes camo is a great idea, sometimes it's not, okay? But really, think about it for 
your location, your area of operations, of what you're doing and where you're going. Think about it that way. And like I said, black to cool is not, you know, looking like a SWAT team member is not necessarily going to just pass with no attention. So uh, that's, that's my last word on it, and I'll let you guys go. And yes, I switched to vaping. I quit smoking some time ago. Um, anyway, thanks for watching.